Okay, folks, happy Saturday. Back at it again with Panther Mania. Oh, and I forgot to look at the thing about the ads driving folks crazy. I don't know that it's... <laughs> I'll look at it next time. I'm so terrible about... Trying to figure internet shit out. I just, I'm just not, I'm not that guy. You know, I'm not that guy. Now, I think that um, before I go any further, I need to give this thing a light dusting. Well, I need to decide if I'm going to put anything on the back of the turret. Uh, I think at this point I'm not going to. We have a Balkan Kreutz on the back of this turret, but we don't. We didn't have space to put it up here in the front, so I wanted to make sure I put that national insignia somewhere on there. So I think I'm going to leave these two Panthers without it. I'm going to give it a light dusting of the Iraqi sand, um, and then we can do some black lighting. Okay, so I'm going to. I'm going to do that. Yes. <laughs> oh man, let's. I want to use this brush, but you know these bristles. There's paint in here, and and they're not sitting even together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of my magic, magic uh, hand sanitizer, and this is acrylic paint, and we're gonna get all this stuff out, or at least enough of it, so that the the bristles lie flat and then we're going to use um then we're going to dry brush this and ruin the bristles again <laughs> they're cheap brushes what can i say they're cheap brushes mr ben good morning panther mania i got a hankering to do some british vehicles i just figured i'd mention that <clears throat> I just figured I'd mention that. I like doing everybody's vehicles. Especially the Soviets, because people are like, ah, Soviets are boring. Well, if you make them boring, sure they are. One of these days, I'm going to have enough, and I'm going to start working on infantry. And I think I'm a little overwhelmed with what i got to do with the infantry. I think... The route I need to do is I need to refer, finish refurbing all my old figures, which is a sizable amount, 60 figures or 60 or 70 figures. Refurb the basing. The, the actual figures are just fine. Um, there is as good as the stuff I've been doing now, or equivalently as good as the things that I'm doing now. That hasn't really changed. Okay, Mr. Iraqi Sand here. So going to go over in this area. And let's get almost all of this off. And then we're going to start down here in the In the if things are going to go to shit, let the shit pile up down here. <laughs> Thought I was going nuts the last few streams with the dates being all oh, well. I think you must have brought, yeah, yeah. It was um, one of the problems that I'm having is that I can't see shit when I don't have my contacts in. And I've, for some of this stuff, I've been trying, I, I can't see the computer at all. I can't see the computer at all. And then I can see this six times bigger than the rest of you, uh, unless you're nearsighted as well, in which case, you know, it's something between the two. Um, so yeah, I noticed that yesterday. I'm like, what the, what the hell? The 15th, I mean, I remember the 15th, because that's our tax day. Um, 
like the 15th was Monday, not Thursday or whatever the hell it was. So I straightened that out yesterday before I went on. So sorry about that. I really shouldn't be trying to make you go nuts. You, you, I'm, you could probably handle doing that by yourself. You don't need my help. What is it that you do? What is it that you vaguely do for a living? You could be vague. I don't want to know who the hell you work for. Just what kind of work are you in? I'm retired. I'm the prince of the village. Or what's the word that you guys use out there that we don't use here? Um... How would I know? The councilman word. Um, this is a councilman type word. I forget what it is. I'm the councilman of the village. I mean, hell, village is something that's not used. There are, not, there are no villages in the United States. They don't exist. Um, they would be equivalents, but they'd be called something else. That's going to drive me crazy. I have to look that up. Alderman. Alderman. Are you the village alderman? You need a monocle. No, those people are trouble. You know anybody who has a monocle that's fun at parties? Well, it was bringing me further away. It was bringing me further away from payday. Knock off Chinese calendar. Why can't everybody use our alphabet? I mean, that's a problem. Like, you speak Chinese, that's cool. Use, can you use our letters, please? Can you just agree to use our letters? Numbers too. I don't want to see any other numbers that look like letter crap. You know? Make it simple. And, you know, and there's some words that just always have a bad connotation now, thanks to some people throughout history. Like, if somebody says, oh, well, I just got elected. Well, what'd you get elected? Chancellor. Mm, not good. Okay, chancellors have, uh, are, 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 have all been ruined thanks to some guy in the 1930s. <laughs> nope. No, we don't need any chancellors. They, uh, those guys are trouble.
History has not been ch kind chancellors, and chancellors have not been kind to history. of these next to each other. Yeah, we got some more stuff that sta stands out here. the top of this now we've got to be really careful because we do need some of this on the number but we don't need it to be ruin what we did and by the way let me make sure I've got the right one on the right one not that it makes that much of a difference I don't know that I can tell a difference one's a little bit greener than the other This one's this one. Yes. Okay. Let's go ruin the command tank first. <clears throat> Still working on Panthers. Yeah, it's it's slow. I mean, you know, if you want them to look, if I want them to look the way I'm happy with, it's a slow process. We tried to convert A1 to one language for over a century. Oh man, we tried. Tyrant did not have a bad connotation in ancient times. There's no recovering that one. Yeah. Dictator. Dictator wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, they appointed dictator for, you know, they had two, con Rome had two count consuls, and in times of trouble, they would, they would, uh, they would, for a, for a period of one year, they would vote for a dictator. They would elect a dictator, or would be appointed, I forget which one of the two things. I don't read Roman history anymore. I'm not playing, I'm not marching little Roman guys around. Yeah, there's some things you just can't recover. The swastika, that's never going to be a symbol of luck anymore. You're lucky if they don't get you. Socialism will never be a good thing. Oh, wait. Kevin, you're up early, man. Did I just let slip? You're gonna do any Italian armor? I will do Italian armor. 
Let slip? Um, oh, you mean with the dictator thing? Um, no. I am going to do Italian armor, mainly because I want to do it justice. Uh, I got a whole scenario book that has Italian armor, and I keep looking at a M1139s. This scenario has four of them in it. Um, I just don't have any Italian infantry. I don't have any. I don't have any infantry for the desert. Period. And if you think Italian tanks are not very good, don't bring them to Russia. They get their ass beat. And you, you, you can't deal with the T thirty four. You think the Germans can't deal with the T thirty four in nineteen forty one? The Italians really can't deal with the T thirty four. That looks better. The question is, do I need to do more? I think I'm going to leave it like this. Let's do black lining and we'll see if we need to do more than that. Okay, same thing on this guy. And then we'll go to black lining land. That I let slip, that I tattle on myself. Now I am going to do Italian armor, but... I have no infantry for that. You know, the thing is, is that right now I've got a bunch of Germans already painted. I just need to rebase them so that I'm happy with how they look. But the actual figures look great. They, they, they look, they're, you know, worthy of being played with. Uh, Americans, same thing. I've got a fair number of them. I could use more. Uh, Brits, I've got four Brits painted. Uh, I love them. Um, but... That's all I have. I have probably 40 or 50 figures for them that are all poses that I like. That's the thing is the figures that I already own that have that I have not painted yet are like my favorite figures. So I got lots of figures that I want to paint. It's just I've been doing figures for 18 freaking years. And... You know, even though I've painted over 100 vehicles, I've built more than 100, I've built, built probably 200 vehicles, and I've painted more than 100 vehicles. It's not getting old um, because I hadn't done this in so long, and I really enjoy learning more about this stuff than I already knew. So I'm not getting tired of the vehicles, whereas, you know, by the time you paint your second squad of infantry, you're like, you know, a lot of the same. So we'll get there, but my my end objective is not necessarily to play this game. It's to just kind of do what I've been doing and... Ah, yes, the six o'clock alarm. Thank you. And um, just get through life. <laughs> this is the therapy session. This is, like I like to say, this is what keeps me from turning into an alcoholic. Um... And I just, I kid about that because I never drink, so I rarely drink. I need to drink at work, but um, the last couple years, and every year more so, it's the work situation is more and more stressful. I, I don't see it changing ever. We're kind of in this new world that everything's a pain in the ass. Problems that we didn't used to have are like, you know, now daily occurrences. So, um, you know, I need, I need something to keep me from going crazy. And this is it. Playing DBA would add on to the going crazy mode. So, um, with all of the unsolvable situations that were coming up all the time. So, that was definitely, uh, the right move as far on my in my situation and I just don't have the time to work on my own set of rules for um, you know trying to improve a DBA type of game that um, that is a living set of rules and I, I, I hate I hate saying that because uh, I don't like um, I don't like it when people do that with government. I don't, I don't like constantly evolving government that 
uh, creates more and more laws. But I think in a rule set, you need because you 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 encounter things that just don't work right, and you know. I don't want to be restricted to a set of rules where it's like, well, this is how we have to play it because that's not covered and this is the latest edition. I'm like, no, I'm playing this with, with those set as a base. And when I encounter something with them, which I know I'm going to, every set has that problem. Uh, I'm going to make a judgment call. And um, yeah, I think I'm going to treat it just like a role-playing game. If I, was playing, uh, if I was playing Dungeons and Dragons, I'm the DM, and I encounter something that doesn't make any sense. I'll sit behind my screen and, you know, and we'll make it. I'm, I'm a pretty balanced person. So that's how I plan on running it. But right now we're just, just painting shit, you know, which allows me to say, let me paint an Italian vehicle. You know, just like I bought the, I got that A13 for the desert. I haven't got any other British tanks for the desert. Not because I wasn't happy that it turned out, but. I just wanted to do some desert basing. I got that Panzer I for the desert. You know? I can do one-offs. Not like, oh, I can't deviate from the plan because I have to have this done by a convention. No, nah, those days are over. I'm not doing that shit anymore. That just brings me more stress. Don't need it. Okay. And I probably am going to try my hand at doing some bushes, you know, some camouflage on here. I don't know that I'm going to make it permanent. I know that I'm not going to make it permanent, but, um, you know, Italian tanks have good guns. Really? There are modelers that play D and D. They model the dungeons. Well, I just meant like a role-playing aspect. I tried playing that video game that I heard so many good things about. Baldur's Gate. I played the original one, what was it, in the late, early 2000s? And I kind of liked it. So I got this one at the end of last year. and It is a woke fest to them. <laughs> it is such a damn woke fest. I think I'm going to start it again and I'm going to play like a, I'm going to play a true racist in a game because I don't think there's a, I don't think there's really a race for people on earth the way they are now. A race isn't about this. Race is about elves versus dwarves and stuff like that. And I'm going to play a racist in the game where it's like humans above all screw other people. Well, they're not people. They're, they're dwarves. <laughs> no, but they just... I think there's there's all kinds of weird. It's it's like a shit show of stuff, mind flares and um, these people that are um, you know I remember the old D and D where you know you had humans and yeah you had elves and dwarves that kind of helped and they had all the monsters and all the monsters were on the other team but now you got like monsters that help you and like these demon looking things that I, I don't know what the hell they're called you know they they got freaking horns if you got horns you're the bad guy sorry uh, that's my Judeo Christian uh, upbringing you know. Um, <laughs> you know anything that remotely looks like a goat? That's bad news, man. That's bad. I don't. I don't want. I don't want to see goat stuff. You know. I don't want to be in. Uh, what's that festival that they have in Germany? The Krampus thing, where people dress up. That wouldn't fly here in the states. Those guys would be. Ha those guys would be hanging from freaking trees and shit like that. <laughs> Elf lives don't matter. That's right. Screw those people. I'm a human supremacist. I don't care what color your skin is. You know, we're all humans. You know, can we all breed with each other? Yes, well, we're all the same race. Think about it. Maybe not the same ethnicity. Members of different tribes. But we're all in it together. Human supremacist, yeah. Yeah.
but I'm old school. I don't like, oh, well, they're not really any bad guys. They're just misunderstood. No, there's some evil. There's some real evil shit. There's evil shit. They're just misunderstood. That's just uh, compensating for people that weren't raised in ways that there's definitely things that you shouldn't do no matter what. You know, I am a, I am a devout capitalist. And by capitalist, I mean there are some things you can't buy. And I think these new capitalists disagree with me. I think everything's for sale. And... If that's how it is, then I guess I'm not capitalist because there's some things that just aren't for sale. <clears throat> I think this is going to be good enough for now. Let me get a little bit of tea and I'll be right back. Yeah, they look already so much better just with that little that little bit of dusting. We gotta make those details pop. I'll be right back. Not everything's for sale. Some people don't understand that. I think most people would agree with me, but the problem is there's a lot of people that are really loud that are Boy, I got this. I'm gonna have to clean this thing. I got little specks of all oh, this is cleanable ever play Avalon Hill to Brook no it's um, before my time meaning it was already an old ass game by the time I started playing and um, I didn't know anybody who played it I played a lot of squad leader, a lot of advanced squad leader. Um, a friend of mine that loved advanced Third Reich, I'd rather go to work and not get paid than play Third Reich. That's it. Advan uh, that sounds as much fun as playing chess for me. I'm just not interested in it. Um, what other old games? Uh, I played Tactics one time. I played Tactics two one time. Somebody introduced it to me. I whooped their ass. They all of a sudden they want to play again. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> um, is this? Hold on. Is this the new known world? You know how you can tell. Is this a tiny shitty ass little bottle? If the answer is yes, it's the new one. I want to use up the old one first, just for consistency. Yeah, here's the old one. Uh, I'm going to check and see if this is the same formula. I think it's fairly similar. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're putting your new ass. Little, I noticed it when I popped this thing off. It felt a little bit more. Um, 
less loose. You back up here in the corner. This I need to get. I need to go into town and get more of my strong tone because I'm out. And I did an interesting thing. I actually looked up something before I went and bought it. Uh, I wanted to know Army Painter makes the the dip like the dip cans. They look like Minwax. Um, yeah, min, the Minwax stuff, right? And um, because it's really it's it's rather expensive, and it takes a lot of trips to buy this, and there's not a whole lot in here. Let's see if I can buy the bigger container, and it's a different material. This is a water-based material or an acrylic material, and the the, the dip stuff is an actual uh, enamel. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to deal with enamels then. I'm going to take a picture just for the sake of reference. I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a picture of this guy without the I probably shouldn't call this black lining because I'm just I'm just doing a really controlled wash. Okay, that's good enough. I just like looking at this stuff later. We had a great discussion about stuff in the the Pacific War last night. Definitely something I'm more than willing to learn more about, which is not difficult considering I I got a lot of gaps in that. I got the Tamiya panel liner stuff, but I think I'm going to return that. I really like using this. I like using material that's really easy to get off your brushes. And using enamels with brushes just doesn't interest me. It just seems like a major pain in the ass. Very good game. Could easily be played with miniatures. Mitch has it. I opened it the other day. Um, the scenarios seem... Uh, I'm skeptical of them. Of the realism value. But the problem with a lot of these games is you start... I like individual vehicles. But I don't like individual vehicles and in mass infantry. And I think that one has... I think the infantry is even bigger than squads. So I played ASL for a long time, and I can actually deal with, you know, one vehicle and ten men in the unit. Well, they got half squads, so you can do five men, but you start getting more than that. And I'm, I kind of lose interest. I played a lot of advanced squad. Well, not by DBA, by DBA standards, I haven't played a lot of anything other than DBA. There's nothing I've even come close to paying 2,500, you know, almost 3,000 games of. That's just kind of in a category of its own. And this that I'm doing right now, I find really relaxing. It takes a while. I don't know how long my feed is going to be today, and the reason I say that is because we've been trying for months to get somebody to look at our couch. We have a couch that we bought that is not inexpensive. It's really the first couch we've ever bought in our whole lives, and um, it it bitches like hell when you sit down in it. And uh, those types of sounds drive my wife absolutely crazy. Mainly because she hears everything. And um, 
They're supposed to come and take a look at the couch. They've been trying to get them out here for months. And today's it, it's today. And the window is between 7.30 in the morning and 9.30 in the morning. So 7.30 in the morning is in an hour and 15 minutes. And I don't want to do my feed if that person's there because, you know, it's a pain in the ass. So if I have to cut off early, maybe I'll be back today. Because I want to knock these guys out. So... Ye, ye have been warned. Mr. Dudeness, have I played Hive? No, I haven't even heard of Hive. Sounds like a, something you kill a bunch of uh, bugs with. I have played Starship Troopers. When it first came out, there's a there's a big there's several people in the convention scene in Orlando that really were in the Starship Troopers. It's an abstract game with no grid. Well, I don't like the word abstract. Because I don't think that way. But with that said, there's some abstract things that I think work really well. There's a there's a Avalon Hill game that came out late in the Avalon Hill phase, about 1990, maybe 91, called Attack Sub. And I would say it is abstract because it has there's no grid. There's just relative ranges that there are between groups of each other and I think it works really well for that and although that game is kind of abstract um, I like that one but I never could wrap my head around up front it's basically naval up front but the thing I really disliked about up front is um, that However, your squad was set up, cards left to right, they were insulated more. It, they were just had that fake insulation thing in there where it was harder to get to guys that were on. I don't know. I just, it just, I didn't play it enough. I didn't own the game, so I didn't look at the rules. And I played, I don't know, four or five games of it, and I think I lost every single one of them. What do I do for work? I tell people where to go. I don't want to talk about work, but let's just say I'm involved in shipping for the con for a construction type job. And uh, at the end of this year, this year, no, at the end of this month, so in a few weeks, I will be year 30 where I work. So... And I love when people say, oh, you should be ready to retire. I said, no, I don't have one of those pension pension type jobs. Doesn't work that way. I have too much overhead to retire. Not like I'd be bored. This guy wouldn't be bored. You'd catch me here every day. Let's, this is what we're going to be doing. I don't even have to buy any more stuff. I'm set. With stuff to work on. Okay, so we've got those little vent thingies. Big difference there. Big difference. Have you streamed on Twitch? I don't. I don't. I don't even watch things on on Twitch. 
the only thing I would want to do, and probably Ben would be the only one that might watch it, <laughs> is I wouldn't mind streaming um, State of Decay, which is a zombie video game that is superb. And it isn't scary. It, it can be... You can get startled, but it, it's not a scary type game. And um, and you can't stream directly on YouTube the way I understand it. You'd have to go through Twitch and I don't know. I, I don't even watch things on Twitch. So somebody was telling me that um, a while ago. Like, oh, do you do... Um, Instagram. I said, no, well, why not? Well, I don't use it. So why would I do something that, you know, this one guy I used to watch would stream on multiple patterns at one, at, uh, platforms at once. But that's what he was doing for a living. He didn't have a normal job. You know, so if, if I don't have 10, 11, 12 hours a day to devote to something I don't enjoy doing, yeah, I'd probably look into doing some of this other stuff. But when I leave that I don't enjoy environment, I don't want to add any more. I don't enjoy this moments to my life. <laughs> you know, and I only figured out how to do this just by sheer luck. You know, I'm like, okay, well, this should be, I'm a above average intelligence person. At least I think I am. Well, that's a, that's what a dumbass would say. You know, I, I don't know, but, um, And I don't necessarily hate technology. I just hate that things get changed all of a sudden for no reason. And since I don't do this for a living, you know, going and creating more frustration when you're not being paid for it or forced to do it is just something I'm just not interested in. You know, it's like that that video game, that video game, that 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 war game channel, Little Wars. Whoever's editing their videos, they're not painting any miniatures. I'm pretty sure because there's a lot of editing that goes in there. It takes a lot of time. So I'm the painter. I'm not the computer guy. Um, because at the end of the day, this that I'm doing takes forever. Okay, but it's relaxing while I'm doing it. And it's a slow, steady process. Um, but when you're working with computer stuff, something can go sideways and it can undo everything you've done. And you don't have anything to show for it. Um, and I have a problem with that. That's not compatible with my personality. So um, that's one thing I've noticed as I've gotten older is we're not all good at certain things. And there's some things that just aren't compatible with your personality. And um, there's some people that are good at attention to detail. Uh, and then there's other people that, um, you know, just different stuff. So. Okay, that one is better than this one, sure. Okay. I think we have done this little section here complete of everything. So now we're going to move to this other one and then we'll do the middle. You know, and if I forget something and miss it, I can come back and do it. As a matter of fact, this panther, I haven't really changed the style I've done things in, except I've been adding this step that I'm doing right now. This panther doesn't have that. And it's technically complete. I'm going to redo this panther and put black lining on it. It won't take that long. But that way, you know. And I'm not worried about sealing it, you know. It, it's in a recess. It's not going to get worn off by your fingers. Sitting here drinking your Arizona tea. That's what this is. It's a diet one, though. Reading label. It's made in New York. Why do they call it Arizona tea? I don't know. Was Yankee Yankees like getting their business and stuff? I don't know. Why is every contractor I've always dealt with it's American this or American that or American the other thing, not from America? 
Just saying. I, I don't I don't miss, I don't have a problem with them not being from America, but don't call yourself that. You know? Come up with something else. My wife says that about uh, nail salons. She says if there's a nail salon it's called fancy nails, they're not fancy. Classy nails, classy people don't go there. Irony is a bitch, isn't it? <laughs> so no, I haven't used Twitch. I haven't watched anything on Twitch. There's, um, there's a couple people that I know that play video games. I don't, I don't physically know them, but there's a couple of folks that play video games live and they get a lot of viewers. And um, I don't necessarily want to do it for that standpoint. I just get bored kind of, you know, that's why I started play, filming our games. A lot of really cool stuff happens that is a shame not to be able to talk to somebody else about it. That's where my level of interest comes. You know, I want to encounter cool things and talk to somebody about, hey, it's incredible that such and such happened. Well, if nobody's watching you, you got nobody to talk to about that, you know? Quite simply, that's the interest level for me. And what I really hate about streamers or people that make videos. And and the internet is polluted with this. I would say that most things on the internet are this. Is staged shit. Is, you know, you go and you watch something where these people make videos. And they're either interviewing people or they're, whatever it is that they're doing. And you have the invisible cameraman. You got somebody running the camera, but nobody's reacting to it. It's just fake and bullshit. You know, and I've never, I mean, the very first reality show, what was the very first reality show that came out? Was it, um, was Survivor the first one? You know, Survivor should be, okay, you put people on an island, you come back in a week. It's all hidden cameras, nothing's edited. And I, we come back and we get one person. None of this voting shit. Make bamboo sticks and fight in fighting formations and impale each other if you need to. We're going to come back and only one person lives. And it's all hidden cameras. Not stage shit and, you know, maybe this stuff really happened, but we're going to reenact it with the dialogue to make it more interesting. I, I'm not falling for your BS. I, I don't, I'm not interested in watching any shows that have that. Uh, my brother is a big fan of... Um, who are the three British guys? Grand Tour, or whatever their show was called before. I actually liked their show because they talked about cars, but then they just turned into this adolescent type humor, which is okay, but it was all staged and reenacted. I'm like, I'm not interested in that. You know, you're wasting my time, you know? But it works for a lot of people. Okay, oh. You got you give me a lot of stuff to think about. Here we go. Let's see, uh, sitting here drinking on a hexagon. Do you think facing should be towards a vertex or one of the sides? That is a great fucking question. That is a great question. I've played games that have done both. Wow, that's a good question. It's 
if I had to pick one, and I could change my mind on this, I think it's towards the side, not the vertex. Because it's easy to, easier to wrap your head around it. Even if for that reason only. I played ASL. At ASL, it's towards... God, I don't remember. I think you have to face towards the side, but the turrets are towards the vertex. So it's like double whammy. I think that's right. Um, yeah. Wow. They're firing arcs and such. A lot of people paint Warhammer on Twitch. There's some... I don't play Warhammer. I like the models. I, I don't really... I'm not interested in the fluff. Um... But there's some there's some spectacular painters out there in in every genre, you know, and I can appreciate the painting even if it's something I'm not particularly interested in. You met a woman who started painting because her husband plays and ended up being her career. I bet she's hot. People, um, you know, if my wife came on this show, you know, I'd get more viewers. And you're. Your significant other wouldn't even have to be that attractive. I'm just saying, you know, a lot of people would be like, oh, girl, you know. She doesn't even play. They just did Pokemon video game championships with you to YouTube. That's how you know the world is civilized. Nothing that crazy is really out there. Yeah. There's a couple of videos I've seen that have a, a presenter that's that's female and they have a shitload of viewers just because it's, you know, and that's fine. That's, you know, uh, I'm, I'm all in favor of a pretty, of a pretty girl, you know, that's, hey, you know, but, um, but I'm not in favor of not being able to, you know, act like a decent human being around them. You know, there's, there's, you know, there's all kinds, I guess I'm, whoops. I've lived in a college town my whole life, so I'm a little desensitized to it. <laughs> but, um, you know, it could be respectful. You know. I'm not exactly somebody who would do cat calls and shit like that. Yeah, I was on my feed the other night. Not last night, but the night before. There was a lady that came by and gave me a tip. And I looked her up to thank her. Because uh, I caught what her name is. And she does... Um, she's... Well, she she claims to be... Because you got to do that now. Um, she's married and she does crafty type stuff. And I guess my channel was recommended to her. So that was nice of her. Um... I really need to ask her, like, how was your channel recommended? Like, somebody said, hey, check out this channel, or she was just farting around on YouTube, and YouTube recommended my channel. I don't necessarily want to, you know, have this, I just kind of, you know, it'd be nice if somebody was interested in what I'm doing to actually, you know, get notified of this, you know, because it's like, this is a very niche type thing but you know I may be doing something that somebody gets really frustrated with in the hobby that could make it easier on them yeah, but first of all I'm like I'm doing historical war game painting what's a, what's a lady doing on here interested in that you know which is you know I'm all in favor of them but the reality is this is not something that they're interested in. my wife not interested in even watching anything even historical movies of any kind. doesn't matter if it even has romance or something. She's just like, she'd tune out. So that's what they got the daughter for. She's, she'll be here in about a week or so back from college. And we're going to go on a tear of watching. Watching stuff that I got nobody to watch with, you know. A lot of people on Twitch want someone to talk to. That's legit. I found it looking into DBA, I think. Then I got the live gut and the, and the algorithm. 
Back in the day, World of Tanks used to do many videos. Always had a couple of gorgeous gals in uniforms for eye candy. If you watch a video or two from someone's channel, their lives can pop up. Even if not subscribe, YouTube algorithm got to the point where it's actually useful, so people stopped using subscriptions as much. Interesting. Yeah, there's probably all kinds of back stuff in there that I'm just not aware of, you know. I just... That's not what I do for a living. So... And I don't think I'd be very good at it. You know, there's some things that I'm wondering, man, I'd be really interested in doing that. Like, I would love to do something that involved Google Earth, even more than I already use Google Earth. I freaking love Google Earth. But I'm a map guy. And, you know, I'll go places. I'll go places. Um, we did this. I'll go on trips. And, and we'll go somewhere, and then when I get back to the hotel, well, now you can do it live because you have a signal everywhere. But I'd be like, okay, where did I go? And, oh, there's that little house, and that looks like that. What's around that? It's, but I love that stuff. I mean, and some people probably have eh, maps, you know, but not me. I'm a map guy. I like maps more than history. Yeah, I haven't really explored Twitch. Um, yeah, the algorithm is something interesting. You'll watch some video and then next thing you know, all their crap is recommended to them. And it's like, you know, and it's hard to get that stuff off of you and not see that because the problem with it in Facebook is as well um, you know I've been hearing for years where it's like you know they only recommend a certain number of stuff to you and then the rest of it just gets lost in the noise and I'm like ah it just sounds like bullshit and it's not because there's people that I'm friends with face on Facebook that I know them in real life they're like you know family friends and I'm like I haven't seen a post from them in years and then you go to their page and they're posting every day and I'm like why am, why am I not getting their recommendations? Because I've seen their posts before, but I never commented on them. So you'll get keep, you know, that kind of stuff that's like, you know. I'm like, man, whatever happened to so-and-so? And I'm like, yeah, they post all the time, but I don't see any of their posts. I don't have them blocked. I mean, I don't dislike the person. It's not like it's somebody that I got into an argument with and I blocked them. So yeah, there's some hidden uh, things going on behind the curtain that us nor us, us uh, mortals are not aware of. But I, you know, I don't do it for a. You know, the only reason I do this is because I got into the bad habit or the good habit of having somebody to paint with in the '90s that would come over once a week, and I miss that. I miss the social interaction. So this is kind of like the best thing I can do, you know. Uh, even if I played games with Mitch, um, he's useless to me when it comes to painting because he doesn't paint. So I don't have this, you know, with anybody here, you know, in town. So that's what I use this for is just some kind of. Um, some kind of interaction. And maybe I'll do something that benefits some other folks. You know, it's not everybody's cup of tea. The algorithm. Even if not subscribe, you have you got to the point where you can it's, it's going to get crazy with AI just doing random shit. Yeah, unfortunately, you're very true, you know, and that that's even worse. That's did I have a dream about that or something like that? I had a dream, and I'm I don't know if I'm going to be able to recall this correctly. Okay, but I'm going to do my best because I didn't talk about it. This happened about a month ago, maybe two months ago. And I think it's an interesting dream. I don't I don't think about AI at all. But this dream made me think about it. And this dream went something along the lines of 
I wanted to do an interview for whatever reason with Eddie Van Halen after he passed away. And I ended up, and I'm, I know I'm getting some of the details wrong, so just excuse me, but it's just, it's made of bullshit. It was a fucking dream, right? And I don't even, you don't get to choose what your dreams are because that wouldn't be my first choice. But anyway, so I wanted to do an interview with him, and, and of course, he's not alive anymore. So I ended up somehow being able to do an interview with him based on the information that was online with the other interviews that he's done. Even to the point where it had a voice that was going back and forth. You know, and I would ask him about, you know, what what did he think about his first album or what's the, you know, what's the what's the worst song that he's ever written and what do you, you know, and I was able to ask him questions like that and it like would respond. Like basically the way I would look up stuff on Wikipedia, but there would be Eddie Van Halen's voice with it and and I'm like and I woke up and, and I thought this is really messed up because now we're not going to be able to tell the difference between a real interview and this fakery that's going on and and some people may not care and some people may not know the difference and um, it's a slippery freaking slope when you can't tell the difference between um, what's true and what's not true. One of the things that is kind of cool about AI is, and I know most of you have seen these, I would imagine, I, I, they got recommended to me. And, um, and I don't watch that much stuff on YouTube because generally if I have free time, I'm doing this. So I'm one of the ones, I'm one of the ones that cause trouble by creating more YouTube content. But I don't watch enough of other people's YouTube content. <clears throat> um, but one of the things that I did get recommended and did catch is this guy or guys or girls, it might be a girl that does it, that does these trailers of movies done in like a 1950s style, like Panavision 70. So they do like a Lord of the Rings and they take, and they done, they do everything like in a 50s style. And it's, it looks better than the real movie. Um, but that, all that's done with AI. So, yeah, I'm, um, it's starting to turn in like an episode of Black Mirror, isn't it? Where every, everything is just being, um, you don't know what's, what's, um, what's true and what's not true. And I'm just not interested in doing stuff that's not true because, um, you know, it's like the whole reality show. It's staged, you know, so... But yeah, that was interesting that I had that dream about having an interview that never happened. There was once a program people would find weird looking at stuff on Google Earth, then send someone to go see what it is. That's kind of a cool program. I wish Google Earth was live, and maybe the government does have it. I don't want more resolution. I don't want to, like, you know, go over a beach and, you know, look, look at girls or something like that. I'm just... With the resolution that's currently available on Google Earth, I'd be like, you know, what's over in this ship dock? Or, you know, what, you know, where's that cruise ship going? I mean, I like stuff like that. Uh, I think it's fascinating. Morning, that's what I do. Painting with you, chatting is very relaxing. Awesome. That's what we're here for. Uh, I think there will be software to detect that our YouTube will start running an algorithm or putting notice under videos. I hope at least. I still paint DVA, though not playing Love Ancient History. Well, internet is fake. It's up to us. Accept, accept no fakes. You know? Yeah. Maybe it's a generational thing. There's some things I just, I just never going to accept. And I don't, I'm not talking about anything controversial here. <clears throat> and I mean like, I don't want a car that tells me when I get out of a lane. 
I don't want a car that goes doot, 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 look up because my wife's car has that. And the way I drive many times is 10 and two. And for some reason it doesn't like me blocking the camera and it's always sending me notices that are annoying. I don't like big brother. Okay. Um, send it to other people that are on their, I see them on their fucking phones while they're driving, you know, stop their car. Well, maybe that's probably not a good thing because, you know, hit the brakes immediately and cause another accident. But, um, I don't like stuff like that. I don't want automatic headlights. Uh, I do like automatic brights that they come off when somebody's coming close, but you know, I don't want, one of the first things I did with my vehicle was when I got it a couple years ago is I took daytime running lights off. Like I'm not, I'm not going to burn out a headlight while I don't need it in the middle of the daytime. It's stupid. Like who's that jackass with lights on? You know, um, I don't, I don't not like big brother things because it, it's another excuse to turn you into a freaking zombie and not think about things. There's people out there that don't want to drive that, that would be perfectly happy having somebody else drive them around everywhere. Not me. I'm a control freak. I, I, I have trust issues. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm never going to accept stuff. like I don't want a car that turns off in the middle of an intersection, you know, like I didn't ask for that to be invented. My brother and I were talking about the other that the other day, and he was like, it, "It's a it's a safety concern." You know, you go and try to get through an intersection or whatever, and the car turns off, and you cause an accident. He was telling me that either a car that he has or somebody that he knows, you can't engage well, if it runs out of gas. Of course, it's your own fault for running out of gas. But he was saying that if it runs out of gas, you can't even put it in neutral, so you can't even push the car. You know, I don't want an automatic driving car. I want some clone that goes to work for me so I can sit here and do this. Going to the beach in real life feels crazy. Everybody got cheek, everyone got cheeks out. People think that smell is the ocean. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm not going to comment on that. <clears throat> That's the thing about the beach. People either love the beach or hate the beach. Um... I don't want to live on it because mother nature is a bitch that destroys everything. But um, generally going to the beach for me is a positive experience. Going near salt water is a positive experience for me. But I don't live that close to it. I live an hour and a half from it because I don't go very often. It's one of the few places where I don't mind being outside, not doing anything and sweating. You know, because I don't mind sweating if I'm like doing stuff that deserves sweating. But just walking around your neighborhood and it's like, you know, 90 degrees out. And I'm like, you know, you're, you're sitting around and you go to somebody's party and you sit outside and you're just drenched in sweat. I'm like, you know, all I'm doing is sitting here. Why the hell am I soaked? But at the beach, you just doesn't seem to care, you know. Um, just get in the water. You know, if you, get, if you get hot, just sit in the water. And... Um, That smell at the beach is generally marijuana. <laughs> it's hard to go to a beach anymore where you don't, you don't smell that. Or a car wash. I go to this car wash locally and everybody's, like, everybody's lighting up a freaking joint while they're smoke, like they're cleaning their car. <clears throat> It'd be nice if Ubers did drive themselves. What you don't want to talk to the, you don't want to talk to the guy you can't understand. There once was a movement to lose calculators because we didn't use our minds to do simple addition. I remember that. 
Automatic driving cars would put Uber out of business if you could give your friends and family rides with one vehicle. Think of the way people lived in the wall e movie. Yeah. We don't need excuses to be any fatter and not move enough. That's what I think of. I'm buying things on uh, Amazon, right? They were just like these fat sacks of shit. Just, just. <laughs> hey, I can talk about that. I'm only gamer size medium. <coughs> Um, Jabba the Hut looking motherfuckers. <laughs> we all need, we all need to, I mean, we all need to walk more. We all need to walk more. Not these are crazy exercises, just walk more. I figured out what my problem is about, or, and probably most people's problem is with weight. We all, well, not people in their teens, but those of us that went through our 20s, we had a metabolism. We basically could eat everything, you know, within reason, you know, and and we wouldn't gain any weight. And we just haven't adjusted our eating patterns to to the fact that we can't do that anymore. It, it's that simple. I, I think it's that, you know, um, and that's the problem. I need to move to a country where the food sucks. Is that Britain? <laughs> Ben's going to come hate me. I don't know, Ben, you're Anglo-English, so, you know, maybe you'll agree with me. Um, I just like food. I don't like every food, but, you know, I just, I like to eat. I'm sorry, it tastes good, you know. Uh, if you had that thing where, you know, I'm going to say pre-COVID because it has existed before COVID. You know, it's not like, oh, all of a sudden this is an issue. No, where you would you would get something in your sinuses and you couldn't taste anything. Uh, you didn't care about eating because you didn't have any taste, right? Do you guys smoke? You s sound a big like Seth Rogen. It would be cool if you could go to one of the store and have a car scoop up, scoop you up though. I don't smoke. I used to smoke uh, cigarettes only. But I haven't done that since March 28th, 1998. And I haven't smoked a single thing. So never done any drugs unless you call alcohol and uh, uh, what's the other one? My favorite one, caffeine. Oh, I can't live without my ca I'm caffeine's ma Caffeine is my master. But no, nothing other than that. I was just talking about drugs yesterday. If I'm going to do drugs, I'm going to do coke. I get more shit done. Yeah, I get home faster. I throw the car on my back and then run with it and then get home. I could dodge in between other vehicles and get home before, not get stuck in the traffic. But just sit around, be even hungrier and lazier? No, absolutely not. I don't need that shit in my life. I don't know if we can, I'm going to snap a picture of this in a second so you can tell the difference between the one that's been, had the forced shadows thrown upon it and the one that has not. Jesus, your grammar there. It'd be cool if you could go to a run to the store and have your car scoop your you up though. Yeah. Or your stuff up. And even faster Amazon. I'd rather buy stuff in a store than Amazon, but the store just doesn't have it. You know, I had to order 
this, they had this stuff at Hobby Lobby all the time, and these places do a shit job of restocking things. This evergreen stuff is what I use for the bases for these Panthers, because they're, they're big. I can't use my little shims. I had Amazon them. Amazon does have one really good thing about it. It's if they send you the wrong thing, it's really easy to do returns. Whereas when you're buying from other places online, you don't know if it's going to be a nightmare. You know, there's sometimes there's lack of ownership. And returns not I changed my mind about this. Like you sent you sent me something shoddy returns. Because I'll overthink about whether I'm going to order something or not. I, I, you know, I overthink a lot of things. And, you know, the benefit of that is you don't ever have to worry about making the wrong decisions because you've already overthought it too many times. But, you know, if you get something that's not up to spec or you get a faulty product or something like that, it's basically not a problem returning it with Amazon. I'd rather go to an actual store. But what's happened is, is people don't go to stores, so stores don't stock things. People don't go to stores because they don't they don't have things or the people work there are too busy playing on their phones. And look, I'm okay with you know people occasionally playing with their phone while they're at work because it makes the day go by quick. But the, this new generation, oh, here we go. I'm going to start sounding like an old person. Um, <clears throat> doesn't realize that the best thing for your work environment is really to make sure that your work day goes by quick. And not doing your job and fiddle fucking around makes your day go around go a lot slower so it's for the mental health you want your day to go by really quick like right now we're we've been crazy at work for the last three months and even though i'm going crazy the advantage is the day seems really short um you can't do that if you're just bored you know so the food in the UK is not that bad. We eat everybody else's food around the world. That's like here. I think we have the best food here in the United States. I don't mean American food. I just mean we have access to everybody else's food. You miss Radio Shack. What did you buy there at Radio Shack? That Did you ever have a Tandy computer? A Trash 80. Remember those things? A trash 80 computer. You miss Radio Shack. Uh, I can't say that. I used to go in there all the time with my dad. I don't know what the hell you'd buy. <clears throat> what do I miss? I don't know. I have to think about that. I'm sure there's something I'd miss. I'd say I could miss, you know, borders, but I didn't buy a book every time I went in there, which is probably why they're out of business. You know, <laughs> it's cheap. you're either part of the solution or part of the problem, you know. We had this store in town that was freaking awesome in like around 1990, 91, 92. It was a store, I'm pretty sure it was a chain called Media Play. And it was basically a, a Best Buy. It was the Best Buy before Best Buy. And they had books and they had movies and they had all kinds of stuff there. So, you know, if you weren't into movies, which, you know, they, you know, they had books and stuff on there. And that was a cool store. You know, I'd always run into somebody every single time I went in there. Um... And they had it here for like three or four years. And then it just went and just, you know, gone. But that was a cool store. But, you know, if I went in there 20 times, I only buy, bought stuff five times. So, you know, didn't work. They sold parts for the IBMs. Do I think two millimeter miniatures are silly? Well... Let me kind of dodge the question. There's a guy, a person, I don't know if it's a guy, guess, my guess is it probably is, 
uh, that made, I think for like DBA, that made these, do I have any DBA counters around here? What am I going to do with these extra DBA stands? Well, I'm still going to, I'll paint 15 millimeter figures at some point in the future. I just won't play DBA with them. I'll play something that's got a little bit more detail to it. But he had taken, are these guys still up here? Yeah. Okay, here's mine. Yeah, here's some of my 15 guys. He'd taken the stand of the unit and he had made them out of like putty and made formations out of them. And it was super cool. So maybe that was even smaller than two millimeter. Um, I don't think it's silly. I think that if you're going to play something like DBA, I think it actually looks better from the standpoint than three guys on the stand that represents, you know, four or 500 people. Um, like I, I would do stuff in six millimeter if six millimeter had more variety, you know, um, but I really like painting stuff like heraldry. So the small scales just don't really do it for me. You know, there's, there's scale. I like the scale because I grew up with this one. Um, a lot of 15 millimeter stuff like vehicles are for some reason inaccurate. Um, I, I think that a lot of the, um, even though I like Battlefront's tanks, like their Panzer threes, the turrets just don't look, they don't look right. It's hard, actually, you know, now that I think about it, it's hard to get a Panzer three turret that looks correct. Something about the angle of the top, like everybody makes it weird. The plastic soldier company ones are weird. The ones from Battlefront are weird. Um, Yeah, I don't think that they're silly. Um, does anybody make them other than a regular? Let's go around this. Ball mount. And then same thing with this, so it pops out. I think 10 mil would be a good scale if there was more manufacturers for it. Mr. Marcus, I thought you were already on here. Napoleonics works with 2 mil. Well, it depends what you want to get out of Napoleonics. If, if you want to paint the individual regiments and facings, yeah, you can't do that. But to get the whole feel of the battlefield, yeah, I think it would work fine. You know? Um, and it depends what you like. I mean, there's a game that seemed like it was getting pretty popular that some people used to play with micro armor called, um, Rommel. But I think Rommel treats all tanks the same and stuff like that. It just doesn't work for me. That just doesn't work for me. Um, and maybe like, oh, well, it's just a really high end game as far as like zoomed out. I'm like, well, I don't want to play those kind of games then. You know, I don't want all my tanks being the same. I don't want all my medium tanks being the same way. Somebody told me, you're going to play Phil Barker's World War II rule set? Why would I do that? Why would I play a game that, that doesn't, tr that treats a pan? I mean, I, I couldn't even handle a Panther D and an A being the same. Like, no. And I'm not here for that. That's, that's not what, that's not what makes me tick. And gets me motivated to to do these different models if they're all the same so let's see we're gonna go around this I'm not sure what this is trying to represent probably a a, a, um, a headlight I'm pretty sure this is a no tech type light that doesn't have an actual um, lens on it 
I don't do this to the road wheels because there's going to be dust in there. It's going to cover it. Just this stuff to pop. Let's go around these periscopes, and then we'll snap a picture and bring it up to the bring it up to the screens compared to the other one, so you can tell if this hour or so that I've spent doing this was worthwhile. I think it is because I only have to do it once. Doodliness, what part of the what part of the world do you live in, ma'am? What part of the world do you abide in? <laughs> All right, let's see if we can. We haven't done the turret yet. Let's just let's look at the holes. Make sure I get the, I'm a terrible photographer. And I don't care how good you are; it looks better with it with the eye. Well, you're painting everything by how it looks like with your eye. I don't know if you can notice this. Yeah, you can. But it just, it adds depth. It adds contrast. And you need that contrast if you're going to be looking at this thing two and three feet away. And it'll look better when you, after I seal it. And we have these little tools and stuff to paint on there. Still. About some 10 millimeter Sarmatians. Once thought they were 15. They looked exactly like the 15 millimeter tabletop game Sarmatians. Yeah, those are those run a little on the small side. If DBA was based on hexagons, would the flanking angles be more interesting? No grid measurements of some kind still. Cali. Man, it's early in Cali. Do you like Cali or are you one of those people that's going to come and move from Cali? I think the weather in California is probably, I, I think I'd probably like the weather in California a lot. I, I cannot deal with earthquakes. Uh, I, I, I couldn't imagine just losing all this and having to start over um, because of how much time it takes. Forget cost. You know, I, I can't buy this. You know, this is like, you know, man. So I, I don't want to like lose all this shit. And um, it's, people are terrified of things they don't understand. Um, People come to Florida. I don't know how you can live there with the hurricanes. Well, first of all, you see them coming. Second of all, um, they're not in this part of the state. Fortunately, they just we're kind of in an insulated insulated area. They could happen, but it's just not very likely to happen here. California Stan. Land of fruits and nuts. <laughs> Somebody once told me that all the all the good looking fruit that you eat comes from California because it's attractive, but the ones in Florida aren't very attractive, but they're juicy. So we use ours for juice and California uses theirs for consumption because it's attractive looking. I guess we just have too many bugs that like to eat shit and make the peel look not as appealing. Aha, look what I did there. I didn't even mean to do that one. <laughs> and nuts, yeah. Almond, right? Almonds come from there. All kinds of shit. Pistachios. We got too many Californias adding to our Latino insurgents. Well, I'm going to tell you what the problem is with that. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. And my dad was an immigrant. But my dad did not come to this country hating this country. And 
although he never forget where he forgot where he came from, he loved this country. And that's really the problem. If you don't, if you come here with like an attitude or a chip on your shoulder about where you came here, that's the problem. And that, th- I, I, that just didn't happen. It, it didn't happen when I was growing up. There's nobody that was in, or I didn't hear, there was nobody that was here in the United States that hated the United States. Well, why are you here? You know, I mean, it's not perfect. You know, no country is, but, you know, they, they kind of went like, oh, okay, well, I need to fit in. So I'm going to kind of be part of the team, not I'm going to be me and the country's got to mold themselves to what I am. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at a company that you work at. You know, you're either part of the team. And I think that that's, that's the problem that people have with immigrants. I mean, some people are just flat out racist, okay? But I think that's the problem that most people that have problems with immigrants have is that they have this, um, they, many have this attitude that either wasn't prevalent decades ago or it was and they just didn't have the balls to say it out loud. I had an incident five, six years ago with a guy who refused to speak English. And I was like, listen, you need to talk to, because I can speak to him in Spanish, but uh, I like, I'm, I can't be the, the guy that is translating every single thing for you. You need to come in. He was, he was the guy that was picking up a load. It's like he couldn't tell whether he was empty or he was just picking up the load or where he was going. Just real basic stuff. I don't need you to write me a lo- love poem or to, you know, write things in perfect uh, grammar. But you need to be able to communicate with other folks here at the plant. And he literally tells me in Spanish, I'm not interested. Fuck the United States. Uh, that was six years ago and he still hasn't gotten his paperwork or got checked out by me. He got banned. Like, you get out of here. And it's okay to hate the United States, but don't go out and tell people about that. You know, you just keep that thought to yourself. You know? I'm staying in Cali. Don't want to live around hillbillies. Yeah, hillbillies are bad, but there's hillbillies in California, too. And a, and a hot Hispanic bride instead of haggard, blacked, White woman. I don't know what that means. There's pretty people everywhere. There's hillbillies everywhere. <clears throat> They're just, they look different. You know? You do need to stay in California. Somebody's got to stay back and pay, pay for all those taxes. I hate taxes because you know why? They don't spend the money properly. It doesn't matter what it is, you know. Here the problem that we have with taxes is that, you know, they collect money for the roads and don't repair the roads. Like, well, then don't call it a road tax if you're not going to use it for that. Be responsible with with our money, regardless of who's running the government. So if you're going to be irresponsible with my government, I don't want to pay taxes because you're just going to mishandle it. You know, it'd be like some kid that gives, asks, allowance for twenty dollars and he blows it on you know whatever and then he wants another twenty dollars i'm like why why am i going to give it to you you're just going to blow it on it you're responsible that's why most people hate taxes you know gimme 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 okay um, 15 minutes tours could have a, a surprise visitor. I'm going to go pee and uh, I'm going to make sure that the wife is awakeish. Be- and then hopefully that guy doesn't come in until like 930. Yeah. Wait, we can have a nice, good, long show. I'll be right back in a few minutes.
Florida too close to the south. Scary people out there. Florabama. That's the panhandle. That's the part of Florida Alabama didn't want. You've heard bad stories about Cubans in Florida acting like they own the place. Hey, I'm Cuban. I was born here. It's different um, generation. Different generation. Um, the immigrants that show up now are very different than the ones that came over in the 60s. Um, you know, it's hard to have people come from a place where they were born in some a totalitarian society. And um, you know, I had an incident yesterday with somebody who's a pain in the ass. And it was Eastern European. And I don't dislike Eastern Europeans, but if they're all like this guy with a chip on his shoulder, wanting to do whatever the hell he wants, walking around in freaking shorts on a construction site, you know, you, you can't just do whatever the hell you want. That's, that's, that, that's breeding chaos. And then you do whatever you want, and then you have an attitude on top of it. It's like, yeah, I don't like South Florida. The South? What's wrong with that? I'm not Southern. I'm from the South. I'm proudly from the South, but I'm not Southern. <clears throat> My kid's gonna be... Let's see here. My kid's gonna be brown. I see the writing on the wall. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. There's some people that, that judge other people by the color of their skin. And there's no way to fix those folks. But most people um, you judge people with how you behave regardless of your skin. We're all, I think we're more likely to associate with people that have the same core values and are raised the same way regardless of what color your skin is. I mean, there's some people that are like, I don't like that guy because he's brown. Well, that guy that just said that's probably not somebody you want to hang around with. You know, like, do you see, if you see like a Confederate flag, does it offend you? I grew up with them all the time. And for me, it was just people that were proud of having ancestors that lost a war and didn't wear shoes. You know, I mean, I mean, sure, there's some racists that wear stuff like that. But, you know, maybe I look at it different because I'm not exactly a demographic that would go hunting. <laughs> Uh, it's just people wanting to be not, you know, it's a rebel type attitude, you know. We are connected to infinity immigrants that can just come over here. These people are walking through Central America. There's, there's no roads. I don't know. Maybe it's better not to read read about current events because it's just nothing. Nothing's ever a good story. <laughs> okay, so I think this guy is completely done. There's all kinds of weird stuff on the internet. There's, uh, you know, I'm not opposed to. I don't know if you were on here when I was talking about the crooked spider thing. I'm not opposed to putting crooked spider things on my vehicles if 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 it's appropriate for the vehicle. You know, we're not promoting that stuff, but. Um, Where was I going to go with that? Um, but there's just like bots and stuff like that that will automatically tag your your feed, and the next thing you know, you can't you know you're banned for a little while. You know they don't listen to whatever you have to say. They just don't even have it on there. It doesn't offend me. I think that. Uh, but you know, on the other end of the thing, I've um, I I've been on a uh, a couple of Facebook groups where they uh, they were a little too prideful of, of German veterans. Let's put it a little bit. Let's put it that way, and that's uh, that's just absurd. That's just absurd to you know have a picture of some German soldiers and and I don't know. I know there's some trolls out there, but you know there's got to be some people that also think that you know oh those are the defenders of Europe. I'm like no no. You know, it'd be different. It'd be different if the Germans were defending Europe from communism and they didn't do anything bad other than being warmongers and they didn't ship people off to, you know, on a one-way train ride, okay? But um, it's still, they would still be aggressive warmongers. But, you know, 
I'm all for killing communists. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, yeah, not that's not the way you do it. That's, that's not the way you do it. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, as soon as I saw those comments, I'm like, oh, I don't belong here. That's, I don't want to be associated with people that could potentially think in such a um, ridiculous manner. I remember when I was when I lived alone, the game that I the room that I used to game in, because I, I needed a big room because we were doing naval gaming and stuff like that. It takes up a lot of space. For decoration, I had a bunch of three three foot by five foot flags all around the room. I still have them, and I have an American flag with the forty eight stars. It's all World War Two stuff. I had a Union Jack and a French flag and an Italian one with the correct little shield in the center of it, um, the Royal Shield. It's not a fascist shield; it's a Royal Shield. And the World War One German flag, and the one with the crooked spider, and the Soviet Union flag. You know, you have them all. You're not like, if you only have one flag and it's that one, not a good sign. And I'm not really a fan of swastika shit, anyways. You know, I don't, I, I don't, I'll, I'll do Second World War stuff, but I don't have like SS things. And at some point, I guess I'll probably paint some SS troops because I have them. But for the challenge of their camouflage, but I really, I really don't like them. Um, but never played with people that um, that were sad that the Third Reich didn't exist anymore. You know, I mean, I, mean, I guess there's people out there, but I, I that's got to be a really niche group. Resisting the urge to going down every one of these lines of the Zimmerin. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to. It's just a, it'd be never ending. <laughs> it'd be never ending. Keep bringing things up and up and up. You look pictures of a real vehicle and they've got less contrast than what I'm putting in here. So. Witnessed a ship miniature battle that used a gymnasium floor. Well, the problem with that is the floor, the gymnasium floor looks like a gymnasium. It's not like it's painted blue or anything. I love the ship stuff. It's my first, it was my first war gaming interest. But you got to be a person that knows about the ships that looks at a silhouette and goes, oh, that's such and such. Or I think that if you don't have that built into you, it's going to be really hard to appreciate some of those games. drilled out the periscope and the machine gun. Let's make sure that's
the reality is, is I won't really know what this looks like until I seal it. Because something happens in the sealing process that just gets everything to just mesh together. Evens everything out. And everything looks so much better after you're done with that. It's, it's very hard to describe unless you've seen it yourself. All right, and then we have the side escape door. It was interesting that you had to say you were shooting what gun at what ship and then guess the feet and range in inches. That's that's what I grew up playing. I grew up playing Sea Creek 4, which used that. You're probably talking about like Fletcher Pratt's or something like that, which I've never played before. Um, but yeah, the range the problem with the range estimating is this, that there's some ranges that are easier to guess at than others. It's really easy because of the angle, and I, I don't know how to explain this to you without you having experienced it. Things at really long range are easy. Things are really close where you can kind of visualize of what a foot looks like are easy. But things that are between like 18 inches to 36 is just kind of a, a weird zone to guess. So it's unrealistic from the standpoint of, uh, of that. So, and, and you end up like burning your freaking brain. And uh, yeah, I don't have the constitution for that anymore. I need games to be pretty much 100% relaxing or I'm just not going to take part in them anymore. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish. Nah, nah, we'll keep doing the black line. I suspect I'm probably going to have to stop doing this at some point when a repair guy comes here. Yeah, I just don't, uh, I don't care that a game takes a long time to play. I really don't. I just don't want to be bored. And I don't want to be tortured. I don't want to be tortured with, you know. With, well, you're retired. You can handle to be tortured, but not me. I, I need to, I need everything to be a positive experience. You know, next week there'll be no, uh, there'll be no painting on Saturday or Sunday. Or Friday. Uh, for that matter. Will there be no painting on Sunday? Unless it's really, really late. It's not likely to be any painting on Sunday. I'm going to be out of town at our biannual convention in Orlando. And, um, you know, I don't know what I'm going to play. I think I'm signed up for playing one game on Saturday morning, a Pig Wars game. And that was it. And the rest of it I'm just going to wing. And that's how I want it. It's like a vacation. And then I can talk to people. And I'm not like... Oh, we got to cut this conversation short because I got to be in a game kind of thing. Like I'm, I'm there to not be rushed and to socialize. So. You want to make a simple game that's good. Well, simple could come a lot of different forms. Some people would say DBA is simple. I would disagree with them. Um, I don't want to play a game that's abstract anymore. I, I want a what you see is what you get.
if you're in California, you were up early, or maybe you stayed up all night. I used to be a night owl, but then in my 30s, forget it. I remember, I'll never forget, the, it was, I was in my 20s. I was living alone, and I'm like, man, I want to play a new video game. This was like 1999, 2000, something like that. It was 99 or 2000. I don't think it was even 2001. So I go to Walmart back when they had computer games, and I heard good things about this game called Half-Life. And I liked it so much, I didn't go to bed. I went right into, I went right into a work day. Yeah, I'd be dead if I did that. It just, you know, I was back in days where you could, you know, be that impressed by something. The first Half Life was awesome. Got up like at twelve or some shit. Slept early yesterday. This is our season for all the cons. I don't know. Some people claim that they don't have any money over Christmas, but... I don't know. One thing that always bugged me is people live close to Historicon. Like, they can't. It's during the summer. I'm like, dude, you're right there. Like, if you're going to go to a show, go to the big one. I want to go to an air show that has a bunch of warbirds, but I think as time goes on, there's less warbirds flying. I don't want them doing stunts over me and shit like that. I'm not interested in that. I just want to see, you know, P-51 or whatever, you know, the daughter's been wanting to go to one of those. And they're few and far between. They got a big one in Lakeland at this place called Sun and Fun. And it's like a whole week's worth. And they literally announce what planes are going to be flying in on such and such a day. You can go on their website. And there's very few um, planes from the 1940s still flying. You know, it's kind of sad, but I get it. You know, did I manage to read any more of that ebook I sent you? No. No, sorry. I still have it. <laughs> I, I, I have an Audible account, and I've got to pick another title or it's going to expire because I'm, like, maxed out on credits, too. I've just been... I've been doing this in work and playing occasionally World of Warships. That's pretty much it. That's the story of my life. Oh, and eating. Yeah. <laughs> Is that an ebook that came with that game? With that, uh, is it Mias 43? Yeah, this is going to look really good. If I gotta go out today, I'm gonna go and get some of the stuff to do some of the... Jeff, where is Jeffrey? Jeffrey's usually on this morning. Mr. Smith, he told me about this episode of, uh, this episode, this article of War, War Games, Soldiers, and Strategy. It talked about making some foliage. And uh, I bought the, 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 the issue digitally. And um, we're gonna try to do some of that. Because these Panthers would be right for that. I, I don't want to glue it on and make it permanent. I think that just laying a couple little pieces on there would probably be, you know, because if they needed to be camouflaged, it would be definitely in Normandy against all these flying yabos. Yabos. P-47. Have a P-47 enema. It's the Mias Front game scenario for the battle near the Dunnitz River.
that's kind of the time period where the Germans were had a big advantage, but you know they were just getting it from all sides. And what I mean by that is they still had crews that were relatively experienced, and they had Panthers and Tigers and Mar. You know, they it wasn't forty one where they had trouble penetrating all the German tanks. They just that's the Germans definitely have the advantage as far as in. Uh, tank combat in that time period. And then 44, when the, once the T-34 85s show up, you know, T-34 85s, uh, as your main tank, that's a big problem for the Germans because he, they can mess with the, well, they can mess with the Panthers frontally. That 85 millimeter gun's a good gun. 85 L 53 I believe and it's a good looking tank too I think the T-30 45s are good looking You still playing World of Tanks there, Kevin? I haven't played, um, what's that World War II game at? Call of, God, what's it called? Hell, I don't, I can't remember what the hell the thing's called. I can't tell if that's Gray or Dunkelgeld. Not so much, need a new computer. Yeah, computers have a limited li limited lifespan, don't they? Call to Arms, Gates of Hell, Lost Front. That's where it is. I downloaded the American one. I made an American expansion for it, and I only played it a little bit. They give you this scenario where you got to land, land at Point du Hoc. I'm like, nah, I don't know. Boring. Not boring, but just very one-dimensional. Not exactly my idea of a good time. I try to play through the campaign. That's the first thing they throw on me. I'm like... It's interesting that they didn't have any supply issues for that battle either. Perhaps a little understrength that some things might have been taken for the main operation at Kursk. Is it, uh, isn't it after Kursk though? I feel like the biggest problem the Germans had at Kursk was the Russians knew they were coming for months. You know, it's like, they're going to come here, so they just built all these crazy freaking defenses for it. And, you know, the Germans are, were really advanced at some things and really shitty at other things. And the things they were really shitty at, and I'm talking about in a, on a military sense, the thing they were really shitty at was intelligence. They had a really poor intelligence. You know? Seemed like everybody else was always ahead of them in the intelligence game. They're trying to play catch up.
good war gaming stuff is this mid war parry with a bit of all sorts of thrown in SS Viking Estonians. When I think of SS Viking, I actually have a, I actually have a book on the Viking. Believe it or not, I don't know why. this for years I probably got it at the same time that I got the Africa Corps book too and I hate that they don't make stuff like this for the for the allied units yes there's a round roundish crooked spider here European volunteers 5th Panzer Division Viking I think at some point I was going to make some Viking tanks um, I haven't looked at this in a long time um, their Panthers tended to have, uh, be painted in a, um, almost like a, uh, splinter camouflage. Yeah. And, and this is the other one, the Africa Corps. Is there a crooked spider on here? No, I think we're good. But, I mean, I got these back when there was no internet. Like, you wanted to learn about specific stuff about units. You needed to buy the book for it, but I don't know that that would be my first place to go if I looked at something. I'd go on the internet. I'd much rather read something like that. That guy that has the 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 web page. I forget what the hell it's called, but on the on the Panthers, like at Kursk and stuff like that. That guy has some really awesome in, in, information. You know, because I want to see, like, find out about specific vehicles and stuff like that. That's the kind of information I like. And his, he's does the one on, he, he did a whole um, series on the Panthers at Kursk, and he's done other things as well. Um, it's during Kursk, the Soviets are trying to hold down the other Germans on the flank. Okay. But it's south of Kursk, right? I read a, a book about Kursk relatively recently or, or listened to one on Audible and it talked about the counteroffensive that the, the Soviets did on the northern bulge. You know, the, the two pincers and then the back of the northern pincer. The, the northern pincer stalled out before the southern one did. And just when it was stalled, stalled out, the Soviets hit it from the north of that pincer. And one of the forces that did the um, that did that assault had a bunch of KV twos that led the assault, like fifty or something like that. If I remember correctly, it was like fifty. And I was like, "What the hell are KV twos doing in mid forty three? You know, they didn't they didn't um, they didn't do really well, but you know." I think there was the, what Panzer Division was out there that had to get recalled to, to plug the hole. I want to say it was the 12th. Not one of those that's really well known in modeling circles or something like that. I think it was the 12th. But anyways, they got recalled from um, the, the Southern Bulge and had to go back and, and shore up the, the Soviet penetration before it got out of, out of hand. But that was the first one to collapse. And I remember reading that. I can just see these Mark IV H's versus KV-2s. If you saw that on a battlefield, you'd be like, those, those things didn't fight each other. Well, apparently they did. The Soviets lost so many tanks in the first two months of the war. I wonder if any of them are just still laying out there in a field. Like, if there's like a field, like T-26 parts or something like that. I suspect that the Germans probably tried to cannibalize as much as things as they could because they were in... They were in need. Hmm. 
slow process, but I only have to do it once, hopefully. And one of the things I mentioned, the other thing I like about this is I'm actually getting to experience every single nook and cranny that this, well, we'll call him a sculptor, created on this vehicle. In a book, it talks about the vehicles that couldn't be recovered were turned into ersatz pillboxes that would then have to be destroyed or neutralized. Or just ignored? Man, there's a pillbox over there. Cool. We're going this way. <laughs> I'm fun staying in the pillbox. Sats pillbox. What if that company that made that game is planning on doing different operations? I'd like to see a, a Vintergevetter one. Wrecked vehicles, a wrecked vehicle could be more work than a than a real one, but. I'd like to have a whole wreck, host of wrecked vehicles for the desert and litter them around um, the airfield at City Rose. I'd make that'd be pretty cool. Make a whole field that's just basically a a runway strewn with wrecks and of planes and tanks. Did you find that that video game is um, was a good catalyst to learn more about that period? Or was it just a fun game? And aside, they did a few for North Apera Operation Pugilist and Chewy Gooey Pass when the Americans first faced the Germans. Did I go invisible again? No, you're here. You just didn't. You just didn't comment. Uh, hold on a second. Let me make sure the chat's not back on the wrong chat. Yes. How did it get back on the live chat? Let's see. What did you comment on it? Russia's making business out of recovering tanks. 
Al why are your things being hidden? Allies always caught the German spies and turned them into double agents. Yeah, there's two chat buttons and it defaults to the one that restricts people. I don't know why. They also did a 1941 scenario on the advance to Leningrad. They have any any duels between you know companies of of T-35s versus a one a, a lone KV-1 holding up the whole highway? Sometimes you can know too much about a subject and not be able to enjoy playing it. I got this hankering to play some Armored Commander too, and I'm like, all right, well, let me let me go into Russia, in a in a, in a Czech 38 or something like that, and I get assigned into this platoon that has four tanks, three of them being Czech 38s and one of them 35s, and no units that use 38s use 35s at the same time. So I'm like. I didn't even do the first mission. I'm like, I can't play this. I can't play this. You just can't deal with a T-34. Check 38 can't deal with a T-34. Got to get a side shot. Got to get close and get a side shot. You bought a monogram KV-1 model, included that story in the instructions. Yeah, the problem with that story is it comes from Erhard Rouse's memoirs. Erhard Rouse was a commander of the 6th Panzer Division, among other things. And I actually got his book on Audible, and I can't stand reading it because it is so... Basically, the gist of the book is, I'm God's gift to military, to, to military command, and we would have won the war if he could have just cloned me and put me everywhere. He is extremely self-serving, and... Um, it, it just it's just difficult to swallow I'm a bit too um, old to fall for that shit so um, it's diff but that's where the story comes from and um, I've heard that a different t that story told throughout the years in many different ways whether the tank is a kv1 or a kv2 but most of the time it's referred to as a kv1 that's holding up the a kv1 would be a lot more effective you know, um, there were some versions of the KV-1 early on that had more armor than a KV-2. The KV-2 had the same armor as the basic KV-1, which was pl which was a plenty. But um, there's some KVs that the KV-1s that had even more armor. But the 76 millimeter gun is a lot more effective than a 152 that fires once a decade. You know. Um, and uh, if you're just sitting there blocking the road, it doesn't really matter what your mobility is. I find a very interesting major culture shock going from the 41 scenario when a Soviet armored car can halt an entire German recon platoon in its tracks to 1987 Angola with Guided missiles. Yeah. That's true. The, the early Soviet um, armored cars had a, had a 45 millimeter gun in them. And yeah, the big problem with the 45 millimeter gun is anywhere it was installed in a vehicle, it, it was a two-man turret. You know, if they had a three-man turret with that 45 millimeter gun, the 45 millimeter gun is as good as a German 50. Or close, anyways. You know, it's better than the German 37, that's for sure.
and then it was improved to to a longer barrel for a 45 that's even better but that thing's plenty good in 1941 to to take out german vehicles so yeah armored car running around with those at least not a one man turret that would be that would just be you know sad Okay, this one's got the long, the longer fenders. I cut them off on this one. I hear somebody moving around. Hold on one second, I'll be right back.
Da -da 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 -da. Just watched a documentary about the 76M, where the 76, they said only a T-34 was more produced by Russia. I believe it. These little guys, got three of them sitting over here. These would have been great in 1941. And 43, you know, they didn't start coming into their own until after Kursk. And uh, there's a lot of things that 76 millimeter gun all of a sudden isn't good enough for. You know, um, scenario is nice because when you finally get a few Panzers, it's a relief. Of course, T-34 show up and all your AT assets are spread out to deal with the armored cars and light tanks. When it's dry, no choice. Hole widening time unless you scatter into the woods and the gullies. Mia's front. I can see if you have any Panthers, they just have a field day. Well, if it's right after Kursk and none of the units from Kursk are there, the Germans shouldn't have any Panthers. At all. You know? Because all the Panthers that the Germans had were concentrated in the south. In the south. Yeah, there was no Panthers up north. There was no Panthers in, in Modal's part at all. All the elephants were up there. Or, I'm sorry, Ferdinand's. Um, they had one Tiger One battalion, and the rest of them was just standard fair threes and fours. Um, no Panthers anywhere in the north. So, and I suspect that I don't know, they didn't call me to proofread that game, so. <laughs> hey, I don't know all the facts. There's a few facts that I know, but I am inquisitive. You know, and still, and being an armor modeler, I'm like, okay, well, what units are there? You know, they have this, and, you know, is that m represented well? I've always wanted to try that. Um, what's that game that made by Eugen Systems? Um, but I think it's a, I think it's real time and I'm just going to be chasing around a bunch of shit and it's going to be frustrating, you know, running around from one place to the other steel division. I always thought, I wonder if steel division's any good, but I have a feeling that it's probably going to be running around chasing these guys too much, driving myself crazy. SU 76s tend to have roof. The roof on or off? Well, they're open topped. If they have any kind of a roof at all, it's just a, a little tarp to protect against them, against the elements. But it's basically a T70 chassis um, with a gun at the rear. I don't think they had a whole lot of ammunition, but you know, it's a dual purpose gun. I'm sure they had AP and AG. Not Panthers. It's 41 with a Panzer three for that scenario. Oh, I was talking about the standard. Um, the standard uh, Mias. Does that 41 scenario come with the... Um... You know, the problem I have on the computer, and Kevin touched upon it when he said he needed a new computer. I don't need a new computer. Just the computer I have has very limited memory. Very, very limited memory. I, I can't keep very many games on it at all, and I don't really game on it much or anything else. I'm going to... Let's see. Let me take a look at this Mias... Forty-three. Graviteam Tactics. This free game. Oh, okay. That's the Panzer Campaigns one. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting them mixed up. Which reminds me a lot of... Um, what was the name of that game? The one that was made by Talonsoft. 
I played that one quite a bit. I wish they had remade that with better graphics. Because I actually like that scale of game. It was like playing uh, Micro Armor. Graviteam Tactics Mia's Front. Oh, look at the sunflowers. Don Ben, Bird Grove, Predators in the Mist. Gravitoon Tactics, Typhoon Rising. I bet that's a I bet that's a uh, Russia type thing. I mean, a uh, advance on Moscow type thing. One of these days it's going to be on on sale. I'm going to have to pick that up. Predators and the Misses download content with Panthers. 1941 is a DLC called Raging Pre <laughs> Bridgehead Night. <laughs> Raging Breadhead. Attack of the... What's the thing everybody is at war? Gluten. Attack of the Gluten. Raging Breadhead. You raging breadhead. <laughs> Speaking of Predators in the Mist, I've played, uh, I got all those close combat ones, and there's two of them that I've never played before, and that was the uh, the Road to Khan one and the Panthers in the Mist. I've played like a couple of battles of each one of them. I really, I really like those games, but man, I just, I hadn't really delved into them. I just haven't really delved into them. Raging, raging breadhead. <laughs> Fusik, Fusik <Heiserl>. <laughs> <laughs> The gluten trooping. Oh, man. <laughs> Kaiser rolls used to be something that was on the menu in most places when I was a kid all the time. You never see them anymore. You know? Many people didn't order them because they thought they were racist or something. I don't know. I mean, a Kaiser roll, something, something on a sandwich on a Kaiser roll. You used to see that all the time. Not anymore. Just like there used to be kids named Susan. They're not named Susan anymore. Ever since the advent of the Lazy Susan. It's like, no, we can't name our kids Susan anymore. Why not? Oh, they're going to be, ever going to think of them as some lazy ass uh, turntable. You know, some slacker turntable. Lazy Susan. Why not like Lazy Francine or something, you know? How lazy did Susan have to be? We should do the same thing. We should come up with some apparatus in the kitchen and name it. Today's equivalent would be name it like, you know, a wobbly Karen. <laughs> um. Yeah, I've got that wobbly Karen in the in the pantry, and you know I got my cans stacked on that. Like what? What is that?
could a peace could a peace take place could a peace takes takes peace could a peace takes peace system work if there was a rock paper scissors and a table involved say a unit was flanked by two other units and their unit types flanking angles would decide the damage I don't know. It seems a bit chess-like. I mean, that might be somebody's thing, but not my. I, I don't like games that don't involve dice rolls. I'm just. I'm gonna be honest with you. Dice roll and dice are part of my life. World War One version of Blitzkrieg. Yeah, it sounds a little bit like uh, what was that game? Diplomacy. You know, where the combat was done automatically. Diplomacy was that way. I only played one game of diplomacy. I showed up with a friend of mine. It was a long time ago. I showed up with a friend of mine, and we ended up playing. And I'll tell you why I won't play diplomacy again. Not necessarily because of this experience, but we we drew countries randomly, and I got Britain. He got France. And when I was doing orders, I put. You know, they talked about if there's any kind of debate on your orders, the unit didn't move, and I had put you know fleet from. North Sea to Atlantic, and I didn't put ocean below, below it, and he didn't allow me to move in there because it was, you know, going towards him or whatever. But we never finished that game. I suspect that Diplomacy is probably a game that most games didn't finish because a lot of time is wasted by, hey, come here, let me talk to you about this, you know, and that just eats up a lot of time, you know. That might be a good game to play at a dinner party or something like that, you know, but you're not going to get a lot of things aren't going to get accomplished in it. Yeah, the one person that I knew in the game in the game basically like you know, people say, "Oh, it's, it's my fault for not putting ocean on it." I think selling point. But I got a couple, I got a one Firefly to paint, for sure. I don't think it's painted at all. I don't think that Matchbox Firefly is painted at all. Everybody likes Firefly. Except it came with the hats that's glued closed. So I can't have some British tank commander that opens up the hatch and goes, <coughs> and then closes the hatch back up and, you know, starts firing some nasty AP at, these guys, for instance. Seventeen pounder penetrates seventeen pounder gun penetrates more than the Panther's gun. Just slightly more. Panther's gun actually penetrates more than the Tiger's eighty eight. Slightly more. I have to see if that's actually represented in the game accurately. Of course, if, if I remember correctly, these rules don't have drop off of penetration over range because the range is so short range anyways. You know, when you're playing on our four by eight foot table, the eight foot dimension is 200 meters. The longest distance is 200 meters. That's like point blank range for a lot of these vehicles. So if you're firing at something, it's not moving, you're probably gonna hit it, you know. I really don't know. I've got to set up. A, I got to set up a scenario. I would have already set up a scenario if my workload was something different. And if I didn't show up from work, like just like burned out every time. Every day. Every forking day. All right. This area is complete. 
this area is complete. Let's go around this headlight and then this will be complete. Okay, we still have to paint that little box. This needs to go around that. And now that is complete. complete off to the turret this is we got we're gonna paint us a new Panzerfuhrer to put in there I've never heard anybody being called a Panzerfuhrer but it makes sense tank leader Somebody, I want to say Battlefield, or maybe it's AB, make troops for the Panzer Lair, and apparently they have a different uniform. Different uniform, like they have like a double-breasted type of field gray uniform for like the ground troops. I won't be buying any of those. We'll just be using standard German infantry for them. Having major reception problems. All right, man. Thanks for stopping by, Kevin. We'll see you tomorrow morning, maybe? And I, I even think about using enamel if I didn't have to coat this entire vehicle in like a clear coat before I use enamel. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I mean, I'll clear it, I'll cover it in a clear coat when I'm done. But I don't need even a, even to slow down my really slow process even more. That just seems like the wrong tack to use. So this is working pretty well. It's a controlled wash. And it's odorless.
actually don't mind doing this at all. If I wasn't in the middle of doing all these vehicles right here, I'd probably work on that little French building. But I don't want to keep getting pulled into different directions and not finishing stuff. All right, this is all good. Flip to this side. That's all good. That's all good. Okay, I think that Panther's done as far as that goes. Now, unfortunately, it's gonna have some spots that are gonna look wet. and look at this at a distance. And it's got a lot better contrast than the other Panther. But that's easy enough to do. All I gotta do is just do the same thing with this guy. Just make some of these details pop. These have better details than the Britannia Panther, which I'm not a big fan of Britannia stuff to begin with. <clears throat> One of those companies that I'm not totally heartbroken that they're out of business. <gasps> How did you say that? I, I just not, I, the only reason I got their stuff is they, somebody happened to have when I walked in. I, I, I really didn't like their, I really didn't like their figures at all, period. Um, very strange looking sculpting. Still better sculpting than I could do. I'm not a sculptor, but uh, I don't really care for the Britannia sculpting style. All right, we got wooden things to put on here. And we also have mufflers to paint back here. And uh, let's see if we can, we have a German tank commander that fits in there right now. I wanna get one that that's kind of propped up because it, it fits in there a little bit better. And I don't have any of those painted right now. I think I have two. I think I have two folks. Oh, but one's in the Panzer three, and he's, I mean, in the Czech 38, and he's, his happy ass is glued in there. He's stuffed in there. Grab this guy here. Well, he's got a machine gun in his face. Well, that's what you get for being a Nazi. Let me take a quick snapshot of this.
Looking pretty good. Let's get the, uh, I was about to call it bolt gun metal. Yeah, it's the bolt gun metal equivalent. What's this called there? Lead belcher. Sounds like the name of a machine gun that fires a lot. Oh, we didn't have, we didn't put the block in those two areas. All right, let's do that before we get carried further away. Lead Belcher, that's what they should have named the Phalanx Close Defense Ship, the Close Defense um, weapon on, um, on ships. Well, with our new Lead Belcher system, I want to use a detail brush. It's not that one. That's not this one we just used. We need to save this one for special and unique uses. This one should do. No. Move this the Panzerfuhrer out of the way. Oh, the jack, of course. Which could have been painted the color of the tank. I choose to leave it in a metal color because it's just an, an option to have a little bit more color back there. Did I paint this side of the machine gun? I don't think I did.
probably the nicest Zimrail anywhere around. It's super detailed, so that you can stand out at a distance. Jack back over here. Okay, now we'll make the things look like wood that aren't really wood. So we're going to get beige brown. And a little bit of black and a little bit of white. Now, I really don't want to use this. I'm going to save that for like faces and stuff like that. Oh, that's a no-no. We can't leave this open. That's a recipe for running into it. It's not too bad, but something happened to the tip of this where it's not. You can't count on it for. Better. The advantage of using cheap ass brushes, you don't lose your soul by doing that to a brush. I mean, hell, this is a craft smart brush. This is a piece of crap. That's crazy that in a week my daughter's finished with her first week in a first year in college. other one
the last one of those. Let's not forget. The back of the MG. I want to go ahead and finish this one up. This side before I go to the other one. go a little bit Okay. Hmm. Yeah, because after that we got the muffler, got the antenna to put on, and that's it. So you're ready to rock and roll, but. I think I'm going to stop just short here and call it a day, or well, call, it a, call it a morning, and maybe we'll see you guys later on today, on your Saturday. All right, folks, enjoy it, and we'll see you